What's up guys, CP Modi here back with another video. So in the past I've actually done a number of videos on my 100 terabyte plus setup and I've gotten a couple of questions of how do I not actually lose anything in 100 terabytes worth of data. And this question also too gets posed to me in my general day to day whether it be making videos like this or even just in person. How do I do something to stop the loss of data in my day to day life? So today we're going to be talking about that and my absolutely bulletproof way to never lose a file again. And and it's easy as one, two, three, or more like three, two, one. And that is a general rule of storage that a lot of people like to cover. And that is what we're going to be talking about here in today's video. And this can be easily scaled up to multi-million dollar setups or just down to your single sort of hard drive in your computer. This setup is simple and easy to implement and you don't need a ton of money. Heck, this whole setup can be done for the price of like one external hard drive, which is really, really cheap. Now, I'm not saying just use an external hard drive, but the three, two, ones of storage is really nothing new and it's actually been something that's been around for quite some time. Now, what are the three, two, ones of storage? Well, have three copies of everything. The two stands for two different formats of backups. So on-site, off-site, here, there, whatever kind of formats. And the one representing at least one off-site backup. And that's basically it. With the three, two, ones, so three copies of everything, two different formats, and at least one off-site boom, you're never going to lose a file again, as long as it's set up properly. Now you can scale this right up. You could have five copies of everything in four different formats and three different locations, 10 different locations. You could have this scaled up to a huge, uh, really big infrastructure, but it's as simple as three, two, one. Oh, and again, did I mention it's really not that expensive with services like Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft Cloud thing, whatever they're calling it this month, all of them offering free options. If you're not really got a huge amount of data, you can actually do a massive, really redundant setup without spending any money at all. Just using existing drives you have and making sure everything that you do have is correctly backed up. The best thing you can do in this particular setup and going down this sort of idea of setting up a really redundant setup is making sure things are done correctly and doing plenty of tests. Don't just set up backups and just expect for them to work when you need them. Make sure you can actually just rip out a drive and have everything operate as normal. For instance, for me, uh, in my example of my 100 plus terabyte setup, each month, I actually go ahead and just take out two drives from whatever random point in the computers, whether they'll be I uh, take out a drive from my computer and take out a drive from the server, or whether I disconnect the internet connection, I always make sure each month that whatever solution I have in place is able to work like that. So when there's actually a problem, I'm not running around going, I have no idea how my setup works or have no idea if it even works at all. I know exactly for a fact how to go ahead and get my files back and continue working with minimal interruptions at all. But let's go ahead and look at an example and show you how you can set up your three, two, ones of storage without spending an arm and a leg, or if you do have some cash lying around with spending as little money as possible, but still getting a very reliable setup. So whether you're looking at it as or just an external hard drive, let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So for our particular setup here, we have just a very simple drive. We have a internal drive on our computer that we want to go ahead and apply our three, two, ones of storage to. Now in this particular setup right here, we'd go ahead and add an external hard drive for our two different types of media. And then we'll also to use a cloud device such as Google Drive, Dropbox, or even Backblaze is my favorite option to go ahead and provide us our off-site redundancy. Now you can use other services instead of using a cloud service. So for instance, you can take a web hosting service and use the FTP file transfer as an option, or you could just use another external drive and give it to your friend and keep it in their house to keep things off site. Now do keep in mind though, off site needs to really mean off site, not just in your neighbor's house or down the street or something. And the reason why you want off site is to avoid things like natural disasters, whether that's fire, flood, earthquakes, or whatever. If you're keeping your data within a very close sort of range of each other, if if let's say there's a fire and you've kept your offsite backup, let's say a K down the road, you're probably going to lose it if that fire is big enough. Sure, if that fire is just your building, then hey, you've definitely got that offsite. But if it is a, a large natural bushfire, you've got not much hope there in keeping your data secure. Whereas a cloud option has it backed up and replicated all across the world. So literally you could lose an entire country and your data is still all there. Um, so for me, when it comes to offsite, you can definitely again, use the idea of just taking an external drive and giving it to your friend to keep it there, but make sure your friend either lives really far away 
or don't do it because it's probably not the best option. Another alternative I've seen people actually do this is back up their data onto either tape drives or even CDs and stuff like that and just put them in bank safety deposit boxes because banks are pretty secure for the most part. So putting it in there is pretty good idea against say natural disasters. Although that being said, if the bank gets swallowed in a massive earthquake, and there's still have a bit of a problem there with getting your data back. Again, that's where the cloud options really do come in. For me, I really do like using Backblaze for my backup solutions because it's exactly that. It's a cloud backup solution provider. Many people get Backblaze kind of confused with Google Drive, uh, Amazon's Drive, or Microsoft OneDrive, or Microsoft Cloud Drive, whatever they're calling it this month. Um, but basically, Backblaze is a backup service. So if you've got a drive, it'll replicate that into the cloud in just about real time depending on your internet connection. Whereas a cloud drive allows you to copy stuff and hold it in the drive and then delete it from your local connection. For me, this is not so much something I like because if I delete it locally, I also too generally want it gone from the cloud. You can set up things and rules and that kind of stuff to keep it there in the cloud for a little bit longer. But uh, all in all, when it comes to backing up in the cloud, try and get yourself a backup solution that is in the cloud, not so much a cloud drive. Uh, another option, if you don't really want Microsoft or Google holding all your data, another great option is using a web hosting company as a lot of them do offer storage and an FTP connection to that storage. As long as you've got a secure FTP connection, you can store whatever you want in the cloud. And we'll get to my kind of setup that actually involves um, hosted FTP pl uh, plans. But for me, I have, for instance, a 500 gigabyte web hosting plan that I can put some really key data in there that I just don't want any cloud provider to have access to and only I have access to. And I guess the third option when it comes to cloud stuff is just getting something like Rack space where you actually own the server and the hardware in there but that can be a bit more expensive. So back to the actual example that we're looking at here. Recently, I set up this exact setup for a family member. So let's take a look here. Now in our example here, we have our PC tower that you might have at home that has a bit of data on it. Let's call it one terabyte of space. We then go ahead and use an external drive, for instance, a WD external drive, giving us that sort of first layer of redundancy. If it gets deleted off our local computer, well, we still have something on site to quickly connect to uh, and it is easy to access. Now this external drive can be replaced with something like a NAS drive or even a local server, but again, that obviously goes up in pricing. Then to back all this up, we have a copy of Backblaze that we'll use as our offsite solution to offer us our final three to ones of storage. Now the benefit of using again Backblaze or Google Drive or Amazon or really anything like this is it is cloud-based and allows everything to go up in real time. But another benefit that not exactly everyone thinks about is now you have access to all the files from your computer in the palm of your hand in the form of your phone. Just about every cloud solution, whether that be again Google Drive, Amazon Drive, Backblaze or anything like that, has has some sort of web application that you can log in and grab your files with. So if you go off to school or you go off to work or a meeting or something like that and need access to a file from home, boom, you can easily access it. For instance, I have access to my full 100 plus terabytes worth of storage completely off-site just over the internet, thanks to the fact that I do have everything backed up in the cloud. Not exactly going to be everybody's perfect solution, but is a great way to just never lose a file again. Now, if we scale this up to an even bigger one, again, for instance, my particular setup, if we take a look right here, we can see I have my editing PC right here, and then that goes ahead and also to has some external drives for either replication of data or just extra data storage, which then goes ahead and replicates to Backblaze, and then I also do connect in right here with my web hosting service, which is about 500 gigabytes where I keep some really important stuff. And then over here, I also to have a private cloud setup, which is something I'm not going to go too much into just because it is a private cloud and not a public kind of thing. Uh, but all in all is the extra layer of redundancy that I do have. And if we draw it in kind of this graph, obviously that's on the screen, uh, we can see here if we take out one or even two, or in some cases, even three layers, I still have access to my data and easy enough to pull it down, which is something I really do enjoy. And I've actually been able to lose a fair bit of data locally and just pull it all back down and have absolutely no problems. And the total kind of setup for me is around 400 terabytes worth of total data because we need to keep in mind whatever we have locally needs to be backed up and also do redundant off site. So let's say you have one terabyte of data. Well, you're probably going to be looking at redundancy wise, maybe three or even four terabytes total because you're going to have an on-site backup plus your cloud and if you were going to go crazy maybe even another 
copy somewhere else. So there's quite a bit of data that you will be creating with doing this, but at the same time, you're never gonna lose anything ever again. And it's really just that simple. Go ahead and make sure you have everything set up and do lots of practices. You don't have to actually delete anything, just unplug a drive and see what happens. Can you still access everything and how does your redundancy still go? I'll go ahead and leave Backblaze link down below. It's something I personally love and you may have seen around the channel quite a bit if you've been here for a while because it is a really awesome service for cloud backup solutions. It's not a cloud drive, it is cloud backup. And uh, boy, has it saved me plenty of times. From drive failures to accidental deletion, following the 321 storage rule is a really great way just to never lose anything again. And for me again, I've lost over 18 terabytes of data, but thanks to this kind of a setup, I was able to pull it down within the hour, which is not too bad there. But guys, let me know down in that comment sections, what is the worst data loss story you've experienced? Because man, I've seen some pretty terrible ones. Do let me know down below. And if you want to pick up some drives that we talked about or again backblaze, I'll leave all the links in that description box. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.